Psalm 58. To the choir master, according to Do Not Destroy, a miktam of David. Do you, do you indeed decree what is right, you gods? Do you judge the children of man uprightly? No, in your hearts you devise wrongs. Your hands deal out violence on earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray from birth, speaking lies. They have venom like the venom of a serpent, like the deaf adder that stops its ear so that it does not hear the voice of charmers or of the cunning enchanter. O oh God, break the teeth in their mouths. Tear out the fangs of the young lions, O oh Lord. Let them vanish like water that runs away. When he aims his arrows, let them be blunted. Let them be like the snail that dissolves into slime, like the stillborn child who never sees the sun. Sooner than your pots can feel the heat of thorns, whether green or ablaze, may he sweep them away. The righteous will rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He will bathe his feet in the blood of the wicked. Mankind will say, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who judges on earth. Well, this is a psalm, another psalm against uh, evil. Uh, David uh, speaking very uh, uh, clearly and directly against evil. And the evil in this psalm is the evil uh, in high places. Uh, people who, uh, verse 1, think of themselves as gods. Uh, these are people who are not just evil, but have uh, power. And there's a movement in the psalm. First two verses, David addresses them. Verses 3 to 5, he describes them. Verses 6 to 9, he prays against them. And then verses 10 to 11, he rejoices over their downfall. So in verses 1 to 2, uh, he addresses them. And uh, you, you get the sense that their, uh, their evil uh, is it's very basic in one sense. Uh, verse 1, uh, what is right? Uh, verse 2, uh, wrongs, right and wrong. We're in a very clear, there's no ambiguity here. This is very clear. Uh, what they're doing is not right. It is uh, wrong. There's also a movement from uh, their hearts, verse, uh, verse 2, uh, beginning of verse 2, to their hands. And uh, there's a movement of them kind of uh, making wrong judgments and then that uh, leading uh, to violence. And then in uh, verses 3 to 5, uh, he uh, describes them. And verse 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray from uh, birth, speaking lies. As much as this psalm is a clear indictment of evil, uh, that verse, I think, just gives us all pause. Uh, you might remember from Psalm 51, David describes himself in very similar at uh, terms, uh, you know, uh, sinful from his uh, mother's womb. And in fact, in Romans 3, Paul kind of applies similar language to establish the universality of uh, the sinfulness of every human being. And uh, Derek Kidner has said that uh, the reader in verse 3 uh, faces a mirror and not just a portrait. In other words, David is not just uh, painting a portrait of evil out there. Verse 3 sort of breaks in. And reminds us that, um, yes, there are very evil people in the world, but the difference between them and us is often uh, in degree and not in kind. And that this heart of evil is in all of us if it is not checked by uh, God's uh, grace. Uh, as he goes on, he uh, talks about their um, uh kind of their uh, attitude towards other be other human beings, which is like a, a snake with venom. And then their attitude to God, uh, uh, verse uh, end of verse 4, like a, a deaf adder that stops its ear. Um, growing up in Ireland, um, I never had to deal with snakes. I now live in Australia. Thankfully, I have uh, never encountered a snake um, uh, up close, uh, but they, uh, they make me shudder and... Uh, you can understand the picture of uh, the snake being associated uh, with evil, uh, the snake attacking its victim. And uh, snakes are actually deaf, I believe. And so uh, this image of the deaf adder stopping its ears is, is pictorial language that, that, that the, uh, the snake does not hear. Uh, it does not listen. And that is what the evil person is like. 
And then in verses six to nine, uh, David prays to God to bring judgment on these evil people. And the, these are the, the verses in the psalm that seem uh, harsh uh, and, and strong, but they are motivated by a sense of outrage uh, that brutal men uh, would roam and ravage in God's world. And if it offends our sensibilities, uh, that says something about uh, the relative ease and comfort of the world in which many of us uh, live and experience. Uh, but around the world, we've touched on this before, uh, there are groups like Boko Haram who have killed uh, thousands of people, displaced two million from their homes, and in 2014 kidnapped 276 uh, schoolgirls. Uh, people like this uh, in, in, in the world, uh, that these uh, these verses, in a sense, give us uh, something to pray that God would judge. Uh, Jesus himself um, was not um, was not immune from using kind of very strong language against those that he was judging. You read Matthew twenty three and the strong language he uses against those who um, uh, led people astray. And yet, and yet, uh, the New Testament reminds us that there is repentance, and there can be. Uh, forgiveness even for the most evil. Think of Paul uh, who persecuted the church and uh, even in one of his last letters would describe himself as kind of the chief of all sinners because he did that. Uh, David himself we saw in, uh, in uh, Psalm 51 and uh, uh, Paul reminds us in Romans 12 that, uh, that, that vengeance is God's. Uh, it, yes, wonderfully this psalm gives us language that we can use to call on God uh, to act against evil. Uh, but uh, the Bible reminds us that uh, it is not our job uh, to bring vengeance on unrepentant evil. It is God's job. And so uh, verses 10 and 11, uh, again, strong language. In verse 10, he will bathe his feet in the blood of the wicked. You see that imagery in Revelation. Uh, but verse 11 is a, a kind of celebration uh, that uh, God is a God who judges on earth. God does not leave uh, injustice unchecked. There will be a day of judgment. Uh, it is hard for us to, to work out all these things and uh, to know when, uh, uh, when we should call for judgment, uh, when we should pray for repentance. Uh, but wonderfully, we can leave it in God's hands and, and uh, be confident that God will judge uh, the wicked. He will not leave the guilty unpunished. But remembering that this psalm, particularly verse 3 and its kind of resonances with other parts in the New Testament, is a check on our own heart uh, to remind us that there's only one human being who's ever uh, uh, been uh, had nothing evil about him, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but for the rest of us, uh, we, we differ in degree rather than in kind, and so we uh, are very aware of our own sin, even as we can look around the world and see there is evil and we can pray. Uh, for God to bring a judgment on uh, on evil people. Let's pray. Our Father, we praise and thank you that you are the judge of all the earth and you will do right. There is no injustice in you. And on the last day, uh, uh, no one will be able to bring any kind of um, uh, charge against you. And our confidence is in you, uh, even as we know and hope and pray that uh, many people in the world today who are shaking their fists at you, would turn to you in repentance. And uh, even as we know the evil that is in our own heart and our need for mercy, and we thank you that you've provided that mercy in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.